Well, experts say the Lebanese economy has spiraled into its worst crisis since the civil war, which ended in 1990. Government debt amounts to around 150% of annual GDP, the third highest in the world, and the cost of borrowing has soared. The two-year bond yield jumping to more than 30%. Now, the Lebanese pound's value is pegged to the dollar, but the government could come under pressure to devalue it. We've got Nasser Saidi served as Lebanon's Minister of Economy and Trade and was also the Vice Governor of the Central Bank. He joins me now from Dubai. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for joining us. Really good to have you um, on the show. The, <laughs> looking at these debt levels, looking at the fact that you take this view to to close banks, it creates panic. And the central bank governor earlier this week told CNN we're days away from economic collapse. Are these the right messages to be sending at this time when the economy is on the brink? Well, the, the point right now is to regain confidence and trust, as Ben Wiedemann was, was talking. Uh, you need to send the right messages. And the central bank needs to extend liquidity to the banking system at, at this time. Uh, the closure of the banks over the past two weeks uh, did not instill confidence, and that's why uh, people will withdraw cash. Uh, there are now informal uh, capital controls. Uh, there is a parallel market or a black market in foreign exchange. Uh, what needs to happen now is really confidence-building measures, uh, in particular bringing in a new government uh, that will correct uh, the the path we're on yeah so the, you, when you mention the black markets uh, in, in terms of the currency we always see this in economies that peg the dollar again uh, peg their currency against the u.s dollar because essentially it's it's not a real value um in terms of what you're seeing on the ground should the lebanese government take the pain now That's and right. just devalue instead of bringing down their foreign currency reserves which puts the country in even more economic difficulty no, I don't think it's, it's judicious to depeg now. What you need to do is undertake fiscal reform, structural reforms, and then you might reconsider the peg. If you just depeg now, uh, it runs the risk that, for one, 40% of government debt is in foreign currency. The banks themselves have foreign, par foreign currency obligations, as does the corporate sector. And that would mean the government itself would probably not be able to uh, finance its interest and its foreign debt. So what you want to do is make the adjustment in other areas and then reconsider the peg. Okay, Mr. Saidi, but you're talking about providing liquidity for the banks. Does the Lebanese government have money to be able to do that? And if it doesn't, where can it get it from? No, this has to be done by the central bank. Uh, when you peg your currency to the dollar, as is the case of Lebanon, uh, you have to use your international reserves. Uh, international reserves have been falling, but the central bank still does have the ability. However, uh, that is limited in time, and I think now is the moment where you now want to start thinking about maybe an IMF program, uh, a stabilization fund, a series of reform measures for Lebanon. Okay, it's interesting that IMF we know would come in and help if they know that the government is committed to creating change. Right now, we have a power vacuum. How do you see that playing out? Well, I think there's now consensus that you cannot continue with business as usual. Uh, the degree of corruption that we've had in Lebanon, the large budget deficits which have accumulated into a large foreign and domestic debt, cannot continue. That's an unsustainable path. And the politicians realize that they've now reached the end of the road and they're now willing to move. What's being discussed now in Lebanon is a new government that would be partly politician, but mainly experts yeah. taking on the main core portfolios like economy, finance, public works, electricity, water, energy, and, and the like. You need that really to restore confidence. But and that will just be the first step along a long road. We're talking about sectarian politics here. That is the big concern, is just who's going to be in charge. And you're talking about that these foreign currency reserves are not going to last forever. It is a race against time, isn't it? It is absolutely a race, a race against time, and that's why you need to form a government as quickly as possible. I call it a Harakiri government, by which I mean that whoever takes position in that cabinet uh, is willing to sacrifice their political future. I know of no governments really in the world that survive what we call the J-curve, uh, where you introduce austerity, reforms, 
uh, you restructure government, uh, you take a number of hard and painful measures, uh, no politician yeah. usually survives that. Very quickly, were you surprised that this revolution is on the go when it started? No, because it's an accumulation of three types of crises. Yeah. There's a political and governance crisis associated with corruption. There's an environmental crisis because uh, of lack of attention to the environment, yeah. air, water and health pollution. And then you've got an economic, financial and fiscal crises. Those three crises came together at the same time, which is why you see people in the street. Yeah. The misery index in Lebanon has gone up. Thank you very much. So really good to have you on the show.